For the past 35 years, the Nissan Pathfinder has been a very important member of Nissan's SUV family. This vehicle was last introduced in 1985, and back then, it was basically just an SUV version of the Nissan Frontier pickup truck. It had off-road capability, it had a ladder-type frame, and a live axle in the back. However, a few years ago, Nissan realized that most buyers don't necessarily need that. They need a more family-friendly vehicle, which is why they moved it to a CarPlace platform back in 2013. Now, of course, that was then, this is now, and this has become one of Nissan's strongest selling models. And today, I'm just outside of Missoula, Montana to drive the all new 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. As you can see from the styling, they've tried to return it to its more truck based roots from the first generation on the outside with a much more aggressive, boxier shape. While on the entire day, they've added a lot more interior space and the kind of tech features a lot of modern families demand. So as I drive this new Pathfinder today, the big question I want answered, has Nissan managed to successfully combine the off-road truckish heritage of the original Pathfinder with the need for a lot of buyers to get a crossover family type vehicle? That's what we're here to find out. Now, when Nissan first took the wraps off of the redesigned Pathfinder in February of this year, I was actually very impressed with the styling when I first saw the pictures of it. The previous generation Pathfinder kind of had like a mommy, you know, minivan-like design to it. I didn't really like the styling of the vehicle. As you can see for 2022, Nissan has rectified that and they gave this a much more blocky, a lot more of a truckish look to the front end. The grille, of course, is what's front and center. This is the company's V-Motion grille. It is wider this year. It is bigger this year to accentuate how this new Pathfinder is about an inch and a half wider versus the previous generation. At the center of that grille, we have the new Nissan logo. They just introduced that, of course, on the new Refresh Armada. I really like the way the logo looks with the kind of black satin finish, um, the white outline in the actual Nissan lettering, which again, just looks a little bit more modern. Every Pathfinder will come standard with full LED headlights. You'll have the reflector style LED low and high beams. Uh, you'll have this LED daytime running light. And down here, you can see there's an incandescent turn signal. I was a little surprised to see that they didn't do a full LED. This platinum grade version is the top of the line model. It also has these LED fog lights and kind of like a skid plate look to the front, uh, lower front skirt of this vehicle. But overall, let me know in the comments below what you think of the front. I think that it looks a lot better and it's going to be a lot more appealing to a lot of buyers looking for a crossover SUV like this. From the side profile, you can see that boxier shape carries over where this vehicle has a more upright, taller look. It is actually physically taller. They raised it by about a half an inch to give you more interior space, a little bit more headroom as well. The wheelbase stays the same at 114 inches long. Its overall length is actually a smidge shorter at 197.4 inches long versus the previous generation. Yet despite it being a little bit shorter, uh, on in the overall length, Nissan says they've added roughly 10 additional cubic feet of actual total interior volume, which makes it one of the most roomiest uh, three row midsize crossovers that you can get. Now, ground clearance sits at 7.1 inches, which is actually a little bit low for this segment. I mean, for something that's called a Pathfinder, I'm hoping that Nissan will eventually offer some kind of, you know, trail rated trim level that will give it another inch more ground clearance, a little bit more meatier tires. This platinum grade model definitely looks a little bit out of out of place here uh, on these muddy roads, these, these snow covered roads. Now the 20 inch wheels that you get on the Platinum, you can see has the new Nissan logo in the center. They kind of have like that machined two-tone look to them. They're wrapped in 255 uh, 50 series wide tires. You can also get an 18 or a 19 inch wheel uh, on a smaller 235 width tire, which should also improve the fuel economy and the ride if you guys don't prefer that. All Pathfinders will continue to have a four wheel independent suspension, which Nissan says they've stiffened up the spring rates for both the front and rear to give this vehicle better handling and also improve the ride quality. A couple of heritage design elements that you're gonna notice here, right here on this little uh, C pillar right here, Nissan says it has kind of like that D shape, which is what's something that the first generation Pathfinder had, which was a two door model. You can clearly see just how much taller this vehicle is. I really like the integrated roof rails, which are uh, black painted. They really look really flush. And you're probably noticing the color of this one. This is called obsidian green metallic. It looks a little bit black out here, but this is actually a very nice dark green. It offers the two-tone look. You can see with the black roof, the green color. Nissan says this is the only vehicle in the segment that'll offer a two-tone color scheme. Technically, no other brand offers that from the factory. From the rear, you can see the new Pathfinder has a much sleeker design. I especially like the skinnier full length uh, LED taillights. These are an LED combination that you get on the Platinum. You can see the brake light and taillight is an actual LED. However, the reverse light and the turn signal, as you can see here, is just an incandescent. I kind of wish that Nissan kind of kept the consistency here to remind you that this is the fully loaded version. Now, a couple of changes that I'm also seeing, Pathfinder is now boldly 
uh, spelled out through the center of the tailgate. That's going to remind everybody that you're driving a Pathfinder. Nissan also offers a black emblem package as a dealer accessory if you guys don't like the chrome look. There's also a platinum four-wheel drive badge uh, at the back here with more of that silver trim on the lower uh, rear skirt area. And you can see my tester has the tow package, which this vehicle will tow a maximum of 6,000 pounds. It's one of the highest in the segment. It actually tows more than the rear drive-based Explorer. And you can also see no visible exhaust tips. Uh, exhaust tips. I'm kind of okay with that considering this is supposed to be a family SUE. But overall, I like the design of the Pathfinder in the front, the side, the rear. This is now one of the more attractive looking uh, crossover SUVs you can get in the segment. Now, a power lift gate is gonna be included on this trim. It also has that hands-free function. And because Nissan has been a little bit better with their space efficiency and their packaging, you do get more cargo space this year. You get around 16.6 .6 cubic feet with the third row seat up. If you fold down the third row, Nissan says that expands it to around 45 cubic feet. If you fold down everything, the company says you'll get a maximum of 80.5 cubic feet, which is pretty impressive. Underneath the floor over here, Nissan also includes this nice handy little storage area, which is bigger and deeper than most of the competitors. It also has a self-holding lid. I've got something kind of on top of it right now. So overall, as a practical family vehicle, there's a lot more reasons to choose this because it does offer a pretty good amount of cargo space. So with most people shopping in this three row family crossover segment, the interior is really where you're going to be judging these vehicles a lot more versus the exterior styling. And this is where the Pathfinder, the new one, really does a good job at making a great impression. I really love the color combination with the obsidian green that my tester has with this kind of brown caramel colored leather. This is the platinum version. So we have the upgraded semi-aniline leather. The seats themselves have 10-way power adjustment with two-person memory on the driver's seat, and they are also heated and cooled. You can only get the heated and cooled seats if you guys spring for this fully loaded platinum trim. But you can see here, looking at this interior at a glance, if you guys have spent some time in the new Rogue, this is going to feel very familiar. I really, really like the way the seats look, of course, with the contrasting stitching and the piping uh, and the fact that they're heated and cooled. They are very soft, supportive, and comfortable. These are the Nissan Zero Gravity Memory Foam seats. As you guys know, they do a typically a really good job uh, with that. Now, when I shut the door, the door has a nice, solid-sounding thunk, so that actually really surprised me, and I really like the way the interior is kind of laid out. Now, I've complained before about Nissan's key, and they're still using the same key, but it does have the new Nissan logo on it, and as much as I want to complain about the key, it's a nice size. They've been using it for years, but at least it doesn't feel bulky or take up space like some of the newer key, key fobs that I've seen. The button to fire up the engine is right here on the dash where you'd expect it. And you can hear there's a new Nissan chime in here, which sounds good. Nissan actually worked with a Japanese company that developed the game Pac-Man to give you that new chime. It really um, gives you a nice modern feeling in this cabin. It's a lot more you know, modern feeling versus the previous generation, especially when you look at the dash design. Now let's talk about the interior materials first. Uh, I wanna mention the metal look trim here looks really convincing. I'm not entirely sure if this is real, but it looks great with the brown, the black piano accents. You have nice soft stitching here on the upper part of the door panels. You have a metallic accented door handle more of that piano black plastic, a soft pad, padded area over here. This platinum grade also includes power folding mirrors, which is really nice. The window switches have a nice high quality tactile feel. This is a new switch gear that I've seen from other Nissan products. Um, a little bit of storage down here. This is hard touch plastic, uh, which is to be expected. And you can see there's some buttons over here for the dimmer control, power lift gate, and the heads up display, which the heads up display is a new addition this year. This is included on the platinum grade version. And you also get this really nice looking fully digital 12 inch display, which is customizable. This is the only trim to get it. All the other trims will have a seven inch display with two um, individual analog dials. So I kind of recommend going for this if you guys want all the technology. Now the rest of the dash you can see here, soft material on this part with the genuine stitching. This is even a soft touch injection molded plastic, which is nice. The 13 speaker Bose stereo is optional, I believe on the SL, L, SL included on this platinum grade. And it sounds pretty good, very much class competitive with everything else. Um, this nine inch touchscreen you can see here uh, is standard on the platinum. You'll get an eight inch touchscreen on other trims. The wireless CarPlay is included on the SL trims and ups. And right now you can see I've got my phone connected. I am a little disappointed that Nissan didn't go with a larger screen. I mean, I'm thinking about the 12 inch displays that you get like in the Highlander, the 10 and a quarter inch display you get in the Kia Telluride and the 12 inch display I believe you get in the Hyundai Palisade or is also a, a 10 and a quarter inch display. I think Nissan could have gone a little bit larger, but their system works very, very, very well. I like how it's very snappy and responsive. The graphics look good. Um, if you wanna go back to the Nissan system, push this menu button here. 
and then I'll take you back to the Nissan head unit, the Nissan Connect head unit, and you can see CarPlay is very easy to access, access there. There's your map display. You can see Nissan has been making updates to this over the years. Nothing terribly special, but this is way better than anything you'll find in an Infinity product. So that's kind of funny to see, you know, a Nissan offering this kind of well, technology and whatnot. When I put the vehicle into reverse, the full 360 camera is included when you guys go for the SL trims and up. It also has moving object detection. It also has reverse automatic braking and blind spot monitoring. That is standard equipment. The reverse auto braking, Nissan says, isn't available on some competitors at any price. So the camera resolution has really improved. You have tra trajectory, parking sensors and whatnot. Not. So this is all very nice. This is going to be very important for shoppers in this segment of vehicle. Down here you can see there's tri-zone automatic climate control. You have heated and cooled seats. Like I said, a heated steering wheel, which is really nice. It's 32 degrees outside right now and it's snowed here in Montana. Uh, the wireless phone charging pad you can see is uh, included on the Platinum. This is optional on other trims. You have to get a premium package on the SL and SV to get the wireless phone charger. I think Nissan should have probably made it as standard a little bit more. You have a gear shifter right here, but it's an electronic one. You push it forward by holding the trigger here to go to reverse kick it all the way back to go to drive, push P to go to park. There's an auto start, stop, defeat button here, uh, electronic parking brake. And this is the new drive mode selector where it offers several, seven different drive modes to choose from. You can see the drive mode selector has a snow, sand, mud, and rut uh, mode. And if you keep cycling down, there's an eco sport and tow. And then you can also turn on the hill descent control depending on which mode you're in. This is all very nice. I really like the way this system looks. Uh, it definitely looks a lot more high tech and modern. If you push this little button here on the steering wheel, you can actually change the way the meters look. You can see it kind of gives you a more, you know, graphical display uh, of the vehicle and what it sees. And it gives you a, like a really weird looking tack and speedometer. So I'll probably leave it in just the traditional mode, but I love this digital screen. I really wish they offered it on other trims besides just the platinum grade model. So you have to kind of go all in to get all of that. Now down here, you can see two cup holders, a nice storage area right there. This center bin is also a lot larger this year. It's pretty deep. Um, it offers a very good amount of storage. There are USB ports in this vehicle, two of them right here at the front. There's a USB-C and a regular USB-A and another power outlet over there, which is nice. Um, right here, you have a small little storage shelf, which a lot of competitors offer that, but some of them offer a little bit bigger space. This is a glove box, which is damped, but not lined with felt. It's a little bit on the smaller side. I expected it to be a little bit larger than that. Uh, and then above me, you can see panoramic sunroof is included on this trim. It is big. Um, it is optional on other trims as part of the premium package. The lighting in here is not LED, which I'm a little disappointed to see that it's not, but that's a quick, easy change. Uh, if you guys, you know, go to your dealer or you can just, you know, buy the LED bulbs and change them out yourself. Now, I find the seats to be really comfortable and supportive, like I mentioned. And overall, you can really feel how much wider this vehicle is. It feels open, airy, and wide, and you have a nice commanding view of the road. It definitely feels a lot more premium, more infinity-like in here, and less like a mommy, you know, crossover minivan type vehicle. Now, because this is Nissan's family three-row crossover vehicle, they've made a lot of improvements to the second and the third row of this vehicle. And it mostly has to do with just the overall usability. The space still remains pretty class competitive, but the one thing I'll, no I'll notice immediately right away is this rear door. It opens a lot larger or a lot wider versus the previous generation, which gives parents a lot more space to get car seats in and out of this vehicle. And it also provides a really nice wide opening for taller drivers to get in without having to duck or worry about hitting their head on the roof. Now you can see looking at the second row of this vehicle, Nissan says you get around 35 and a half inches of leg room and um, the space you can see here looks a lot you know, more open and airy thanks to that panoramic roof, the wider body. The captain's chairs are new for the Pathfinder this year. You could never get this on the previous generation. These captain's chairs are standard on the platinum grade. They're available uh, on the SL as part of a premium package. This of course reduces the seating capacity to seven, but if you guys get the bench, this will now seat a total of eight people. So the Pathfinder used to only seat seven. The third round now is able to accommodate uh, three people, which is very nice. Um, and it's very much brings it in line with the rest of its competitors. You can see the door panel also has a really nice soft material. You have these manual rear window sunshades on the Platinum which is really nice. And you also have your own set of climate controls and heated back seats back here, along with two more USB ports uh, in the back. Now getting in into the second row here, you can see the step in is nice and high. And for somebody that's five foot seven, I do have plenty of space back here. These seats, they do slide back a little bit more. Uh, and this is with the seat all the way back. I mentioned earlier, 35 and a half inches of legroom, which is not a lot for the numbers. Some competitors approach nearly 40 inches of legroom back here, but the feel is definitely pretty nice. Now shutting the door, the door has the same solid sounding thunk. And when I get back here, you can see 
you definitely have a raised seating position. You can feel the fact that the roof was raised up, the seats back here are a little bit higher versus the actual front seat, so you kind of have that view over the front seats, which is great if you guys get car seat pretty easily. I like the heated uh, back seats back here in the second row. There's two level, you have your own set of rear seat climate controls, uh, which is really nice. The two USB ports, an actual household power outlet over there. And the center console is really nice. You still get armrests, however, uh, which come down and provide a really good amount of comfort back here. So if you guys need to actually put stuff back here uh, or people back here, it's great. Now, the one thing that Nissan pioneered on the last generation Pathfinder is the ability to put car seats in the second row and still be able to slide the seat forward. You can still do that. You can put up to three car seats in this vehicle and you can still have the ability to flip the seat forward even if there's a car seat uh, still buckled in here, which is a really nice feature. That is, of course, locked out. If there's somebody sitting here, it has a weight sensor, it'll lock that out. And if you're driving over one mile an hour, it'll also lock it out. So if you're worried about kids in the third row, pushing the second row um, seat forward while you're driving, or if there's a baby there, it won't actually move, which is a nice safety feature. Now, I do wanna mention this center console. It is removable and you don't even need tools to do it. I like how it's pretty deep in terms of storage, although it's not very covered storage. To remove the center console, all you have to do is just take this little piece out right here. This just pops out. And then down here, you can see there's a lever. You just push the lever up and you can see it very easily just pops out. And I can pretty much hold the center console with one hand. You can kind of just store this away uh, in the cargo area if you'd like, or leave it in your garage. You can see when you remove the center console, it reveals this nice little open area to get into the third row. Let me put the center console back and show you guys what that's like. It's literally a one-handed thing. Nice satisfying click. I like that. And then you can kind of just pop that back into place. So that's a really nifty feature. I know something like the Highlander offered that, but this is a lot easier to remove. You just have to store it in the trunk area or in the cargo uh, in the cargo area or in your garage. Now let's hop into the third row of the new Pathfinder. Nissan makes it pretty easy with their Easy Flex system. This is uh, what they're calling a very class exclusive feature. And like I mentioned earlier, you can move this seat forward with a car seat still anchored into this position or into this seat. Uh, and it has a weight sensor, so it won't do it if there's somebody sitting there. Now push this button here, you can see the seat just basically catapults forward and it pretty much delivers or opens up this space. It's a huge amount of room to get into the third row. The third row, as you can see, now seats three across. I really like the head restraints, how they're very tall to provide a lot of comfort. Now let me get back here and show you guys what the space is like. Now, in terms of the leg room, Nissan says there's only 28.5 inches back here. That's a reduction of around five cubic feet from the previous generation. I'm not entirely sure if that's a typo or if maybe they're measuring it a different way, but you can see here at five foot seven, I actually have a really good amount of headspace back here. The headrest you can see here is very comfortable. It comes up very high, so I, it has given me good support. The seat itself definitely feels a little bit low. Some competitors offer a little bit more space in that regard. You can see my knees are kind of up against this, so I have to ask the passenger here to move the seat forward slightly to give me a little bit more space. But you can see, I could probably sit back here for an hour and be relatively comfortable. There are uh, USB-A charging ports back here. There's also rear seat air vents to give you a little bit more comfort. It's a pretty decent view. I'm surprised the panel roof doesn't come a little bit further back. This would have been nice. And you can see there's a button here that you can push that'll push the seat forward, which is really nice when you wanna get out. But remember, that button is locked out when, there's, when it senses weight or if the vehicle's speed is above one mile an hour. So underneath the hood of the new Pathfinder, those of you who prefer a naturally aspirated V6 will be quite pleased to hear that this is the same carryover three and a half liter unit that we saw in the refreshed Pathfinder that was introduced back in 2017. Now, of course, this engine is still the same VQ35DE motor that Nissan has been using for the, plus, the past 20 plus years. The motor was updated, of course, with direct injection. This now makes 284 horsepower and 259 pound-feet of torque. Those power figures are the same as last year's Pathfinder. Remember, Nissan gave this engine a big upgrade back in 2017. The big news, of course, is that CVT built by Jatco, that has been replaced by a nine-speed automatic transmission. So those of you who hate the Nissan CVTs, the company is listening to feedback, and now we have a nine-speed stepped automatic from ZF. This is the same ZF transmission that we found in cars, a lot of Honda cars, a lot of Stellantis vehicles like uh, Ram, uh, Jeep, um, and Dodge, for example. However, 
Nissan tells us that this transmission is now in its second generation. It's still a ZF built transmission, but they have made improvements over the years and Nissan even made their own specific software tuning to improve the shift quality, the responsiveness, the smoothness. So we'll talk about that as we go on to the driving scene. Now, in terms of fuel economy, it's rated to get up to 21 in the city, 27 on the highway. That's with all wheel drive. It actually gets a little bit better gas mileage with all wheel drive. This platinum version that I'm showing you with the bigger wheels and tires drops that fuel economy down to 20 in the city. 25 on the highway regular is of course the recommended fuel this will tow a maximum of 6,000 pounds with the tow package which includes a transmission cooler that that comes with the tow package the base towing capacity is around 3,500 pounds now in terms of the weight nissan says this new one is actually a smidge lighter than the previous generation but at 4,600 pounds and change this is still again one of the heavier options but overall the powertrain for those of you who like v6s you'll like this however i did ask nissan if they're going to plan to do a hybrid version electrified version this chassis can handle it however at this time there are no plans for it but they are going to continue to look at it based on consumer of consumer and of course dealer feedback and demand so now that we're finally behind the wheel of the 2022 Pathfinder, I want to briefly remind you that I was not the biggest fan of the previous generation. The VQ engine, while it liked to rev, it wasn't the most refined engine. It was kind of noisy when it was pushed. And of course, the Xtronix CVT by, built by Jatco was good at, you know, putting the engine into its torque band or into its power curve, but people don't really like CVT. So now we've got the same V6, but a new nine speed transmission. So we're gonna go into the driving scene and talk about the all wheel drive system, the transmission, and of course, uh, the engine of this vehicle. Uh, the one thing I do wanna talk about the gauge display, I actually like how it's super customizable in this platinum version. You can, again, go to a traditional look for the Speedo and TAC, which I thought I liked this, but then I tried using it in this mode where it puts it the gauge display onto the side. And I actually really like the way that looks. So I'm gonna actually leave it on that mode because I think it looks pretty cool. If you're looking to turn off the stability control, you actually have to go into this screen and go to VDC setting and that's where it shuts it off, which is a little bit uh, annoying that they didn't just give me a separate button. That would have been better. Uh, I also wanna mention the steering wheel is power tilt and telescoping, which is very rare in this segment. And for how aggressive and truck-like this looks on the outside, Nissan fitted it with a rather puny sounding horn. So I don't know why they decided to do that, but that's not really a big deal for a lot of buyers. Um, what is a big deal, of course, is how this vehicle drives. And <laughs> this now has a new all wheel drive system where Nissan gives you several different driving modes. There are now seven different driving modes ranging from auto, there's a tow haul, there's an eco mode, there's a snow mode, there's also a sport mode, and there's like our mud and ruts, ruts, ruts mode. Um, the all-wheel drive system uses a new clutch delivery system where Nissan says that it will basically start to sense when the wheel, the front wheels are gonna slip and it'll automatically send power to the back before the slippage even occurs. Now that will help to increase driver confidence when you're you know, driving in slippery conditions or when you're taking this vehicle off-road. I don't think many are gonna be taking this off-road with such little ground clearance and uh, these street-oriented tires. But you know, right off the bat, I'm noticing just how refined the ride quality is in the new Pathfinder. Even though we've got these massive 20 inch wheels, the retuned suspension gives you a nice confidence. The steering actually has good feedback. Uh, it has good heft to it, um, but it doesn't beat you up with a bad ride quality like some competitors do, like the Ford Explorer ST, which does ride a little bit on the stiffer side. This is very comparable to the last Hyundai Palisade and Kia Telluride that I drove. Um, and maybe even a Toyota Highlander. It's a nice riding vehicle. Uh, it's got good visibility. Nissan Safety Shield 360 is standard. Um, this one here has the Pro Pilot Assist because it's the Platinum that comes standard on the SV trims and up. I also like the heads-up display. It shows you, or my GPS is up right now and it tells me where I'm going to turn. It also shows me that here in the actual digital display, which is really cool. You can customize that. Um, and. It's just a really quiet and refined car. On a road trip, this is going to feel really nice, and that's very important for this segment. People take these family crossovers out on road trips, so you want it to be roomy, you want it to be spacious, you want it to be quiet. You also want it to have plenty of power, so I'm gonna switch it out of the auto mode. Let's go over into the sport mode. Uh, now we have 284 horsepower, which is the same power as last year, uh, and it weighs slightly less, so let's go ahead and find a straighter road up ahead here because I do want to test out the acceleration that little vibration that you heard is from the lane keep assist that senses the lane markers and it tells me or it tries to shove you back into the lanes 
Nissan says they've retuned the transmission and it's in its second generation now. So let's see how it accelerates here from a stop. Turn off the start stop feature, which is a little bit, could be smoother. Now I want to point out that we are at 4,000 feet above sea level here, so this naturally aspirated engine is probably losing 20 to 30 ponies. It feels a little bit sluggish, uh, but the transmission is surprisingly way more responsive than the last 9-speed I drove, which was in the 2021 Ridgeline. Floored there, there's a little bit of lag still, but it could be worse. I've definitely felt and sampled worse from this transmission, but Right there, it's a little bit faster. You can tell Nissan's done some work to the tuning and ZF has obviously done something to make this a little bit better. It's still not perfect. It's still not quite as good as the eight speed that you find in the Hyundai and Kia twins. The CVT in the Ascent is also way more responsive. That one I clocked a zero to 60 um, in around the 6.5 second range, which was really very quick. Uh, this to me, feels like closer to eight seconds. In fact, I do have my zero to 60 timing equipment. So um, let's go ahead and skew over to that footage because I did get a quick zero to 60 in this vehicle at altitude. So I did confirm that we are sitting at around 4,000 feet above sea level here in Montana, which is obviously going to affect the performance of a naturally aspirated engine. But because I brought my trusty zero to 60 equipment, I do wanna test the zero to 60 of this vehicle. I'm gonna redo this test, of course, when I have this vehicle back home when we're at sea level again. Now I have the transmission in its sport mode right now. We're just going to essentially brake torque it a little bit and try a run here. Yep, my reaction was a little slow there. 7.9 seconds on this first run, uh, which is probably a second slower than what it should be doing. Not bad, but uh, the transmission does provide pretty smooth and crisp shifts. It's just, it could be a little faster still. Run two, try again. All right, so now I got a little bit better of a reaction time and I got 7.68 seconds there, which is actually not bad considering we are at elevation. I have no doubt that I could probably get this in the low, maybe even under seven seconds when I have this vehicle again at sea level and I redo this test. All right, run three, let's see what I can get this time. In this time, I got 7.58 seconds. So we're kind of knocking it down. This is acceptable for what you get. Um, not the quickest, but I'll be curious to see what it does when I have it at sea level again. So again, I'll be sure to post another video doing a zero to 60 test when I'm back at sea level at home. But other than that, this is a very nice driving vehicle. Um, the all-wheel drive system basically just gives it a sure-footedness now. It doesn't have really any wheel slippage. I did take it on some dirt roads around the uh, camp pro campsite property uh, and it just kind of handles it well. It just needs a better set of tires uh, and it would be a lot better. Um, but you know it has very comfortable seats as well. I like the zero gravity well, leather, premium leather that you get with this one. The heated and cooled seats are nice. The heated wheel is nice. Um, it's really not much to complain about with this car other than the transmission, which is good. It's just not the best. And you know, if you're gonna be spending this kind of money, you may as well go for the best. And what Nissan has really done here is they've definitely made this car a lot more desirable. The previous generation had one of the lowest owner satisfaction scores that you could find in the industry. And this one now is definitely a lot more satisfying. I like the new tech in it. I like the way it handles, the way it rides. I like the roominess of the interior. Love the second row and third row, how versatile it is. Um, but you do need to get this fully loaded platinum model to get all the bells and whistles. The uh, Nissan 
ProPilot Assist, the Safety Shield 360 also works fairly well. It works better than the last Toyota and Honda systems that I've tried and Subaru systems actually. Um, not quite as good as the Hyundai and Kia systems which are really, really impressive considering their mainstream status. But I'm having trouble finding too many complaints. Um, the exterior styling is nice. The interior feels high quality. Uh, it's nice and quiet in here. There's no squeaks and rattles. Uh, in terms of fuel economy, I'm going to have to retest that when I, when I have this vehicle at home and I can do a fuel economy loop. The trip computer right now is basically saying we're getting 21.4 mpg in the last 12 miles of driving. That, that, does, that has included some spirited driving to show you guys how this thing accelerates, especially like right now, foot to the floor, it's hesitating a tad to downshift, but at least when it does downshift, it's smooth, and then when it upshifts, it's smooth. It doesn't have this weird power trail-off feel that you have with some of the older generations of this transmission. And the V6 is a lot smoother now. It's still a little light on torque. I would love to see Nissan do a hybrid version of this. You know, I'm surprised considering the Highlander does 20 plus percent hybrid sales. I think they would have seriously benefited from offering a hybrid powertrain or plug-in hybrid. So only time will tell if Nissan will add that. For those of you who require and prefer a naturally aspirated V6, this will suffice, but it also comes with the, those drawbacks, whereas you have to rev the crap out of this engine to get decent power, um, whereas some competitors that are turbocharged, like the Mazda CX-9, the Subaru Ascent, feel a little bit faster than this, um, especially if you're planning to tow and haul heavy loads consistently. Now, as most of you know, Nissan has been dealing with their fair share of struggles over the years, from old products to slipping build quality to issues they had with their ex-CEO, Carlos Go. And it hasn't been a good year for Nissan in the last couple of years. And for 2022, Nissan is trying to rectify that with their next generation Pathfinder. In fact, their Nissan Next event is promising a lot of new models in the coming years. This is one of many new models uh, and the new Pathfinder will be going on sale next month. And I have to say, after spending the day driving this new Pathfinder, I'm actually coming away pretty impressed. Just like I was impressed with the um, new generation Rogue that I drove earlier this year and even the refreshed Armada, Nissan is learning. They're listening to the feedback from their consumers and from their dealers, and they're making the necessary changes to rectify that. We really like the new styling of this Pathfinder. You can see on the exterior in the platinum grade. I would like to see Nissan offer an off-road oriented model with more ground clearance and not your tires to kind of go with that overlanding theme. I really, again, like the V6 engine. It is getting old and long in the tooth, but it is a proven engine. So if you guys prefer a naturally aspirated V6, you're going to like this. But that new nine speed transmission, as much as I hate the nine speed and other products, I think Nissan has done a pretty good job with tuning this transmission. It's now in its second generation, like I mentioned. It's a lot smoother. It's a lot more responsive. You get better fuel economy and it tows a lot easier with this transmission. So if you guys were considering something like a Honda Pilot with this transmission, this is now the better interpretation and you still have that bulletproof Nissan VQ V6, which sounds good. And it moves the vehicle out decently well. I'll do zero to 60 testing when I get this vehicle back home and I'll redo another video. The interior, as you guys saw, is full of really great tech, although Nissan kind of limits you to get the fully um, loaded platinum version to get everything. But the second row offers that seating flexibility, the captain's chairs, that easy removable third uh, center console, and everything kind of folds flat to give you a good amount of space. So as a family vehicle, the new Pathfinder definitely excels. I'm just not entirely sure I would choose this over something like the Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade. Those are the class leaders for me still, although Nissan has made this a lot more appealing. If you guys are considering a Highlander, you're considering a Subaru Ascent, you're considering a CX-9, you're considering a Honda Pilot, this is probably one that you need to put at the very top of your list, but it has an uphill battle ahead of it, considering just how good, of course, the Telluride and the Palisade are. Not to mention we have you know, new versions of the Pilot coming very soon, and Subaru should also be updating the Ascent. Same thing with Volkswagen, they just kind of updated the Atlas. So there's a lot of choices out there, but thankfully Nissan has made enough updates to this Pathfinder to keep it very competitive. Have they managed to successfully marry you know, the truckish roots of the first generation with the car-like demands that buyers want nowadays? 
I would say yes, but don't expect to be taking this thing off-roading like some of the truck-based earlier generation Pathfinders would, at least until Nissan gives us a true off-road oriented model with skid plates, more ground clearance, and better tires to give us a little bit more capability. Now, I do want to talk about the pricing of this new Pathfinder because the previous generation started at around $32,000. This new one is around $1,500 more expensive at $33,500. That's a reasonable increase considering what you get in terms of technology features and space. This fully loaded platinum version uh, basically tops out at around $48,200 plus destination. That represents a $2,000 increase over the previous generation. Again, Nissan has kept the pricing very fair. You get a lot of safety tech features as standard. But just keep in mind, if you want everything, you need to pay nearly $50,000 to get this fully loaded model. Those of you who are okay with giving up the heads up display, the cooled seats, the full digital display, you know, you would be pretty happy with an SV or an SL, and those should be in the low to mid $40,000 range, which makes it a very enticing option when this new vehicle does go on sale next month. Well, with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.